Neurons communicate at synapses. This is a specialized structure where they share information. The upstream neuron releases neurotransmitters that the downstream neuron receives via receptors, and this allows brain signals to travel from neuron to neuron throughout the brain. 20 years ago, scientists discovered that another type of cell that had been completely ignored in our investigation of the brain, called astrocytes, were part of the synapse. Like neurons, astrocytes release and receive transmitters. This gave rise to a much more complex and complete picture termed the tripartite synapse, a concept discovered and developed by Dr. Philip Hayden. Over the past 20 years, we have been investigating the role that astrocytes play in the control of synapses, circuits, and behavior. Early in this period of investigation, we coined the term the tripartite synapse to recognize the important role of the third element of the synapse, the astrocyte. While this allowed a major step forward in recognizing the role of astrocytes and other non-neuronal cells called glia in information processing in the brain, this concept does not explain how, why, or when astrocytes release their transmitters to neurons. And this is what Dr. Hayden's group is interested in discovering. I remember doing my PhD talking with a friend of mine in Paris and telling her, you know what, I don't think astrocytes actually listen to neurons at synapses. I think they must be listening to something much more global, something that gives them some context, like hormones, neurohormones, or neuromodulators, things that tell them what to release, where and when. Um, now, obviously, we cannot study every single gliotransmitter that astrocytes release all at once, so we focus on my favorite one, which is D-serine. D-serine is a small molecule released by astrocytes that is necessary for the activity of a receptor called the NMDA receptor. This receptor is crucial in determining the strength of the synapse, and thus the connectivity between neurons. That's why deserine is important for learning. But when deserine isn't available, connections between neurons don't occur properly, and this is one of the causes of schizophrenia. Interestingly, another well-known aspect of schizophrenia is the lack of acetylcholine in patient's brain. Acetylcholine is a neuromodulator that is released in the brain as a function of arousal and alertness. It is low in the brain during sleep, but very high during wakefulness and activity. Acetylcholine acts on receptors such as nicotinic receptors, and we think this is why 80% of schizophrenic patients are smokers, since nicotine from smoking cigarettes and acetylcholine act on the same targets in the brain. Since both deserine and acetylcholine are disrupted in schizophrenia, this made tough scientists wonder if these two were actually linked. We wondered if astrocytes were capable of sensing the levels of acetylcholine and use that as a clue to know how much deserine to release to neurons and when. Now, since we already know that acetylcholine levels can fluctuate throughout the sleep wake cycle, the first thing we did was very simple. We just looked at whether deserine levels as well were fluctuating throughout the sleep wake cycle. To do so, scientists performed in vivo microdialysis, which means that they collected the fluid between cells in the brain of freely behaving mice and then measured deserine levels in that fluid at different times of the day. So we performed microdialysis over six hours and compared the levels of deserine in the brain to the mouse's activity. And what we found was that if the mouse was asleep, we collected very little deserine, but if the mouse was awake, we collected a lot more. In fact, there was a very strong correlation between the mouse's activity levels and deserine in the brain. What researchers found is that deserine levels in the mouse brain oscillate with the sleep wake cycle. Deserine accumulates during wakefulness and activity and decreases during sleep. Next, they tested whether deserine comes from astrocytes, so they used mutant mice in which astrocytes can no longer release gliotransmitters like deserine. What they found is that in these mice, Deserine levels remained low and constant all day long. Since deserine is important for learning, scientists also wanted to see if their findings directly influenced a mouse's performance on a learning and memory test. They found that mice learned and remembered best after a full day of wakefulness, when deserine was the highest. Mouse performance was low after they had slept, but this could be artificially enhanced if they were given deserine. Altogether, this was a pretty good indication that astrocytes were um, detecting the state of arousal of the mouse and using these to determine when to supply this serine to synapses. The next thing we had to do um, then was to determine exactly how astrocytes detect the state of arousal and wakefulness of the mouse, and we had pretty strong indications that it was simply listening to acetylcholine levels. Using various techniques, tough scientists were able to show that deserine levels followed acetylcholine levels. 
In addition, researchers found that this link could be broken by blocking a receptor called the alpha-7 nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. At this point, all we needed to do was check to see if alpha-7 receptors are located on astrocytes, which is the most logical explanation. To do this, we created mutant mice that lacked the alpha-7 receptor on astrocytes. Scientists use viruses that recognize and infect astrocytes to deliver to them an enzyme that finds and cuts the gene for alpha-7 nicotinic acetylcholine receptors out of their genome. What they found is that when alpha-7 nicotinic acetylcholine receptors were deleted from astrocytes, deserine levels were low, constant, and unaffected by the state of arousal of the mouse. Additionally, using a technique called optogenetics, authors were able to directly stimulate the neurons that are responsible for releasing acetylcholine in the brain with blue light. They found that this increased deserine levels, except when they blocked alpha-7 nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. They concluded that alpha-7 receptors is what links deserine levels and acetylcholine levels. What's remarkable about our findings is that the alpha-7 nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is at center stage of clinical trials for the treatment of schizophrenia. In fact, one of the molecules we use in our study has been in recently in phase three clinical trials. When it was administered to mice, Tufts scientists found that they were able to elevate deserine levels. This means that astrocytes could very well be the missing link in our understanding of schizophrenia and the key to treating it or other psychiatric disorders. Authors concluded that astrocytes gather information about the arousal of the animal by sensing neuromodulators such as acetylcholine and use that information to supply the adequate gliotransmitter in the appropriate amount at the appropriate time. By doing so, astrocytes are able to accommodate or anticipate the needs of neurons and provide what authors called contextual guidance to synapses.